Let me explain to you why actually having an LLC in uh, Delaware is a bad decision. The thing is that people talk about Delaware, Delaware, Delaware as the holy grail of uh, incorporation or LLC formation. But in today's conversation, I want to explain to you clearly why this is not such a good idea. Let me first give you the pro tips here, okay? Now, the thing is that if you don't live in or do business in Delaware, and you, you have heard that you should form an LLC in Delaware, let me just save you a lot of cash and headaches. Bottom line here is that you should not form an LLC in Delaware, period. No questions asked, okay? Now, a uh, corporate attorney might actually try to trick you into having an LLC in Delaware. Do not listen to them. The disadvantages of forming an LLC in Delaware far outweigh any quote-unquote advantages, any benefits you may have heard about, okay? Let me give you a, a very simple example. Let's say you, who are listening to me right now, you live in Connecticut. You live, uh, you, you you are in Connecticut, Waterbury, Connecticut, okay? So you've had, you have read online that Delaware is the best state to form an LLC, right? Okay. So you decide to form an LLC in Delaware. But remember, you live in Waterbury, Connecticut, okay? So you are a resident of the state of Connecticut. You already pay taxes in Connecticut. Your home office is in Waterbury, Connecticut. So the whole thing is, you know, when you when you have this set up, in other words, your home and your home office, your business, everything is in Connecticut, but you are actually going to Delaware to actually follow your uh, your LLC formation. There is something wrong with this setup. Now you might be thinking, well, you're trying to really have like uh, you're trying to have you're trying to optimize, as they call it, you're trying to optimize your LLC uh, status. But I'm going to prove to you in today's conversation again. And I'm gonna really break it down for you. Why the uh, again the, the the cons, the disadvantages, the drawbacks far outweighs any perks, any pros, any uh, positives that you you may have heard about. It's really important to understand that one, you always have to ask yourself, what is my ROI? What's my return on investment? If I'm trying to set up something, if I'm trying to set up a, a business structure, is this business structure? helping me more than I'm actually paying. In other words, am I getting more benefits than I'm, than I'm actually paying? Let's talk about that. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. The very first thing that you really need to understand is that you are, if you live in Connecticut, Waterbury, Connecticut, right? And you basically uh, have a business, an LLC in Delaware, you are going to get an official mail from the Connecticut Secretary of State that basically tells you you are doing business illegally in Connecticut. It doesn't matter if you are living uh, in Waterbury. It doesn't matter if your house is, is just next to uh, state, uh, Connecticut State Capitol. You are basically are registered in uh, Delaware. So the Connecticut Secretary of State enforces its laws and will soon it will soon be sending you a citation and a fine in the mail because you are doing business illegally in Connecticut. That's number one. So I, I really want you to picture that. So which means what? Because because you just got a, a letter from authorities in, in Connecticut, you're gonna have to remedy the situation, right? Because uh, you don't want your ass to go to jail, which means what? It means that now you have to register your Delaware LLC as a foreign LLC in Connecticut. Remember, you live in Waterbury, Connecticut, okay? So basically what happens here is that you are forced, so you have like a, a two steps. So number one, you left Connecticut to go to Delaware to register your LLC, and then you came back to Delaware to register your LLC as a foreign LLC, which, is, which means what? You need to file a Connecticut foreign LLC registration and pay the state filing fee. It's about $120, $125. You must then keep your foreign LLC in compliance with Connecticut law. That means what? It means you need to file a Connecticut annual report every year. That does, it happens every year. It will cost you about 20 bucks, 20, 25 bucks, as well as paying the business entity tax. That's about $250 every other year. So every two years, you have to pay 250 Remember, this is on top of already paying the $90 filing fee in Delaware, the $300 required annual franchise tax in Delaware, the $125 annual fee for your uh, Delaware registered register agent because you don't live there, right? Because So you need somebody who is there. You need, you need a registered agent who lives in Delaware. In short, you need to maintain two LLCs, a domestic LLC in Delaware, 
and a foreign LLC in your home state of Connecticut. Now, it gets worse. By the way, boss, before I, I, I talk to you how worse it gets, let me remind you of today's uh, topic. I'm giving you reasons why you shouldn't really form your LLC in Delaware. You know, the thing is that when we talk about uh, LLC or corporation, like S corporation or C corporation, generally, and all experts agree on, uh, agree on this, taxes are paid where money is made, right? So if you, made, if you make money in New York, you pay taxes in New York. If you if you make money in in uh, California, you, you pay taxes in California. If you pay taxes in uh, if you make money in uh, Florida, you pay taxes in Florida. Now you were deceived. If you form your LLC in Delaware, you were probably deceived into forming that LLC because you read somewhere that Delaware is a tax friendly state. So and while this is true, it really only applies to large multi million dollar corporations, not small business LLCs. And, you know, and the thing is that it's one of those things where you have to really do a lot of a, a little bit of uh, digging here because uh, what you read, what you read in the news and what the reality really is, is totally different. You got to really go to the Connecticut Secretary, uh, to the Delaware Secretary of State's website to read to read about uh, what's really happening here. OK, so most people are unaware of this simple fact. Taxes are paid where the money is made. That means that you will you still owe Connecticut taxes, which could include but not are, are not limited to sales and use tax, business entity tax, withholding tax, corporate business tax, net income tax, sur tax, franchise tax, property tax, and more. Remember, you live you live in Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay, so you are a resident of Connecticut, and an LLC is a pass through entity, which means what? The profit from your LLC are reported on your on your federal income tax return, as well as your, your Connecticut personal income tax return. So when you file your taxes at the end of the year, you get, you're going to have to uh, report your uh, your uh, LLC income on your Schedule C of your Form 1040. After receiving your Schedule K-1 from uh, the 1065, you, you would have filed for then uh, that, that LLC. In short, the whole reason you formed the, the Delaware LLC is defeated. It's not saving you any money on taxes. In fact, this whole loophole is unknowingly costing you a lot of cash. Now let's talk about the Delaware Court of Chancery and Delaware law. Everybody believes that they are the best. I mean, you know, you know, you probably have heard something along these lines. The Delaware Court of Chancery is the oldest and most established business court in America, and Delaware has the most robust business case law right who cares really when you think about it again if you are a large business if you're an amazon if you're a microsoft if you are you know making billions transferring billions of dollars from in and out this might make a difference but if you're making like uh you know you know what i mean that do you really care so what are you starting here are you starting some lawsuit rampant company where you're going to court every other month really or you really want to run your business or you want to actually spend your money spending all your cash your cash outflows actually hiring and uh, firing uh, firing lawyers because that's the whole thing i mean you know you want to take a reality check most of these companies actually they're promoting delaware don't give a crap about your businesses the long term of success and well-being really they just want your money so it's one of those things where you got to ask yourself who is uh, benefiting from the crime really here I mean, because the whole thing here is that, yes, I mean, they, they, they want to package the whole thing such as, uh, yeah, Delaware is actually the, uh, the best place to go because of the court of chancery and uh, a robust business case law. But again, at the end of the day, you have a business to run. You're not a lawyer. OK, so don't be misled into the headaches. You want to focus your, your energy on running a legitimate and successful company in the state where you actually live and do business. In your case. You, you, your ass must be in Waterbury, Connecticut. Just focus all your energy in running a superb business, making profit, and paying your fair share of taxes. That's just a lot better to, than trying to really, uh, you know, doing the back and forth between Delaware and, uh, and Connecticut because uh, it, it, it ain't really worth it. Being, you know? So the bottom line here is what? If, you're, if you have a large business, yes. As I said before, if, you are, if you're transferring, if, if we're talking eight digits, nine digits six seven digits 
it's worth it. But if you're making less than, I don't know, I, I, I don't want to put a number. My, my goal here is to let you understand here that it's not really worth the cost far outweighs the benefits. Plus, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We were having a conversation about reasons why you shouldn't really uh, form an LLC in Delaware. Let me talk to you about other industry related issues. See, the whole thing here is that when you actually are trying to really, uh, let's say you're in Waterbury, Connecticut. By the way, I'm not really picking on no Waterbury, uh, Connecticut residents. You know, th th this whole example can actually apply to anywhere else. It could be in Teaneck, New Jersey. It could be in New York. It can be in Florida. It can be in Georgia. It can be uh, Mississippi. It could be anywhere. The point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, if you live in one state, if you do not live in, in Delaware, you live in a state that is different from Delaware. You can even be living uh, in Alaska or Hawaii. And you want to uh, register your LLC in Delaware, you got to really understand that uh, it's not really worth it. Now, what are the other industry related issues? Well, think about it. Let's say uh, you are running a business that is supposed to be local. You are running a business where basically uh, everybody knows that you have no connection to Connecticut, but you are registered in Connecticut. Number one, if people find out and you have to let them know that your, your, your LLC is formed in, in Delaware, this could create issues, okay? And also, if th there's a problem, let's say uh, you live in a, you work in an industry that uh, plays the, like pays a lot of importance to uh, risk management. So let's say you are a uh, delivery uh, a delivery driver, for instance, and you're paying insurance, and so your uh, business insurance actually uh, is registered for an LLC in Delaware, but you are driving in Connecticut, you're driving in Delaware, Connecticut, or you're driving to uh, Pennsylvania, like you're driving to PA, you're driving to Jersey, and something happened, there could be complications. I do not want to spend too much time explaining why, but if you are interested, let us know in the comment section. We'll explain to you that there are some, um, there could be at, uh, a lot of issues. There are some industries also where you are required by state law to actually uh, get a license so basically let's say uh, you are in Waterbury Connecticut and you want to actually uh, get a business license you want to get a, a healthcare license there could be complications because uh, if you're registered in, in Delaware you might not actually get the license it's just part of state law it's, it's one of those things you have to work on so uh... So the bottom line here is what the bottom line here is that you know instead of forming uh, an LLC out of state and then later learning that you need to register your out of state LLC as a foreign LLC in your home state you know instead of uh, paying for an extra registered agent instead of paying annual reports in uh, two states instead of having let's say uh, tax liabilities in two states and dealing with the headaches of maintaining two LLCs why don't you just uh, make things a lot easier for you just from your LLC in your home state or the state where you are doing business. In other words, you got to have a connection to that state. So, you know, it can be either because you live there or because you do business there. And uh, if those two coincide, if those two coincide, then it's just a lot better because uh, you have a state where you live and you have the state. It's the same state where you do business. So you just form just a one LLC. Okay. Nothing complicated here because, uh, Doing else, doing otherwise will be very complicated. And what I'm telling you about uh, Delaware is kind of similar to uh, Wyoming because we, we, we've heard Wyoming is the best state for LLC formation, one of the best, if you will. We've heard about Florida. We've heard about New Mexico. So, you know, so the thing is that you always have to uh, think about the advantages that uh, one option like gives you versus uh, another option. Remember, anytime you are actually uh, incorporating or organizing your LLC in those states, you're going to have to form a foreign LLC in your home state. Always. And uh, because, uh, you know, state authorities will say, you know, you do not actually, you do not actually uh, live or reside in the states. You're not domiciled. You're not domiciled in the states. So you are running business illegally in the states. So for you to remedy everything, you are going to, you're going to have to actually uh, form a foreign, a foreign LLC. It's really weird. I mean, I think as I told you before, basically it's kind of weird in our in our example, our, our hypothetical example. 
you live in Waterbury, Connecticut, and you are registered as a foreign LLC. When it comes time to actually filing your taxes, you are filing uh, Connecticut uh, state income taxes as well as your federal income taxes. One thing I want to tell you here is that, you know, all the advice I've given you into this conversation applies also if you work online. Even if you run, let's say if you run an online business from, from home, you are still a resident of your home state and you are still transacting business in that state. So you cannot get around your state's tax obligations simply by forming an LLC out of state. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. And uh, a lot of times it's just a lot better. To put your time and energy into building a successful company not wasting your time in on a handful of loopholes you read on the internet i mean it's it really not worth it it's the same thing where you know those people who were pushing those uh, loopholes they're just trying they're just trying to get your cash that's all they're trying to really uh, you know come with, with those gimmicks to kind of get your cash that's all but are you you really want to really put your energy into your llc and making sure you do your best do your absolute best so that you can actually grow your company, make it more profitable, boost sales and so on and so forth. And again, as I said earlier, you just want to pay your fair share of taxes. That's all. Pay your fair share of taxes. Play by the rules. Just play by the rules. Play games. That's all. Play by the rules. You want to remit the sales taxes to the authorities. Okay. You want to pay your sales tax, whatever. Everything, you know, all the costs that you are actually incurring. You can actually recoup. You can actually uh, recoup those costs onto the sales price of whatever business you're doing. In other words, you're passing on those costs onto the clients. And if you run your business uh, responsibly, you should be profitable, and you should actually uh, come out profitably. Okay, so it's just a lot better. Now, if you live in or do business in Delaware, then this video does not apply to your situation. You should form your LLC in Delaware. Not a problem. Okay, so this is actually great. The only the only exception is if you live and do business. I mean, if you live or do business in the state. But if, if, if none of that applies to you, then you really, really want to, uh, again, go back and rewind the, the, the 15, 17, 20 minutes that I just spent explaining to you why it's, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea to register your LLC in Delaware. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I explained to you briefly why uh, it's, you shouldn't really register your LLC in Delaware. So I gave you the pro tips, and now I'm doing the recap. Thank you. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.